Hi guys, welcome to our further study webinar. I'm your MC today, JK from FEN Education. FEN Education represents 200 and more college uni all around the world, include Malaysia, Korea, US, Japan, and more. And today, we are honored to invite Miss Krista, the representative from the Hong Kong University of Science and Technology, and Jason is a Malaysia student who is studying at HKUSD at the School of Business to share with us. So let's welcome Miss Crystal and Jason. Hi, Crystal. Hi, Jason. Hello. Hello. Hi. Hi. How are you, Crystal? Hi. Yeah. How are you, Jason? Uh, now I'm from in Hong Kong, but then Jason is now in Malaysia, but then she, uh, he's still studying in HESC. And then later on in the next hour, we're going to tell you more about our university. Okay, sure. So uh, I think later, uh, later Crystal will introduce HKUST and share some admission, uh, admissions information with us. And then while well, Jason will share some student experience uh, in Hong Kong and HKUST with us. Lah. So I'll uh, pass the rest of the time to Crystal first. After that, by uh, Jason. Okay? Yes. Is it okay? Thank you. Yes. Okay. Sure. Okay, so I pass the time to you, Crystal. Okay, so now let me uh, share my slides with all of you. Wait for a moment. So welcome to this uh, section of uh, HKESC. Uh, today we are very glad that we have the chance to talk to all of you, no matter you are from Malaysia or other countries. As long as you're interested in our university, we we'll welcome you to join this section. And then before we start, we just like to make sure you have a comfortable seat because in the next one hour of time, we're going to tell you a lot of information. Make sure you can hear me clearly and then make sure you can see my slides and then grab yourself some snacks, maybe a cup of coffee to enjoy this webinar. And then as we have already introduced ourselves, I'm Crystal from the Undergraduate Recruitment Admissions Office of HKESD. And then today we have also Jason, business school student from HKESD, who are going to share with you his life in HKESD and in Hong Kong. And then, uh, First of all, I'd like to tell you more about our university. I know that a lot of you might not have a chance to visit Hong Kong before or our university before, but here in this slide, I'm going to show you our university. 
in here you can see this photo this buildings belong to our university this is the main academic building and then you can see our campus it's in Clearwater Bay and then we are surrounded by mountains and trees and we are by the seaside and then we are so excited to share with you that uh, all of our residential hall nine of them in our campus are along the seaside so these buildings are our residential hall for our students so if you are international students you may have the chance to live in Hong Kong in our campus you can enjoy this gorgeous sea view every day when you wake up, during the daytime when you are doing projects with your classmates, and even at the night time before you fall asleep and have a nice dream. And then uh, a lot of you may wonder, when did we start to build this beautiful campus by the seaside? I can tell you that uh, since 1991, we built this campus and then do some simple calculation. You can see that our university is only 29 years old. So we are under 50 years old, we are called Young University. And among all the young universities in the world, we rank the top. And then if we compare us with all the other universities in the world, we rank the 27th world. For achievement for a young university like us. Apart from our university, our university rank high. Our graduates also rank high in a lot of rankings. In particular, I would like to share this one with all of you. We rank number 10 in the World Graduate Employability Ranking. From here, you can see the list of schools in this ranking in the top 10. You can see we're just slightly behind some of the famous universities in the world. And then for this ranking, it's originated from a consultancy company, which introduced um, different universities to employers and asked them, University graduate from which school you would like to hire most? And a lot of them pick HKSC. And that's why we rank high in this ranking. And this ranking could be ensure that you can get a good job. No matter you want to work in an international company or in a company in Hong Kong, you can get a good job after you graduate from our undergraduate programs. And then a lot of students or parents usually, uh, when I join the fair, they will ask me, uh, how come a young university like us would have such a great ranking for our universities and our graduates? And I will answer them because innovation is all around our campus and our programs. And then we provide a stimulating, stimulating learning environment for our students. In the next few slides, I'm going to tell you more about the learning opportunities that we offer to our students. So first of all, any one of you here like robots? I'm sure one of uh, some of the students who want to study engineering, you might want to build your own robots, right? In HESC, students not only watch movies with robots, they also create their own one with our famous robotic teams. You can see this is our robotic team, and then they have already competed in a lot of different international competitions and have great achievement, won a lot of award, awards in those competitions. And no matter you are students from the School of Engineering or Science or even Business and Humanities, you are all welcome to join their team. You'll be trained by the senior members, and this is the way that we guide our students to learn. You break the discipline, uh, not only study your major program, but to explore more during your undergraduate study. Another part of our school, we also have side program. This is a program that we uh, want our students to be creative and want our students to contribute to the society. This program is a program that uh, we offer to our students to build some healthcare products with their uh, ideas and to deliver those products to different countries. And one of the products would be this uh, device, which is the eye de disease detector for diabetic patients. And you can see our students not only build this device with their programming skills and a lot of different simple devices like mobile or optical lens, they also deliver different medical devices or solutions to uh, the other part of the world to help to contribute to the local society of their the other countries. And that's what we want our students to learn. We want our students to take our opportunities to learn and to go through those experience and we want to tell our students that university is not a factory and that one size fits all doesn't, is not, uh, is outdated. That, and that's why we have a lot of different new academic programs and a lot of different learning experience for our students to learn from those experience. 
And one of them would be the uh, individualized interdisciplinary major. This is a major that we create uh, around uh, four to five years ago. And then uh, you may think that this name is a bit long and then you're not sure what are uh, students in this program studying. Let me quote you an example. Uh, this is Thomas, one of the students in this IIM program who has already who had already graduated. But then at the high school, uh, when Thomas was searching for a university, uh, he couldn't find any uh, traditional university that fits his interest. His interest is in bionics, that is the creation of uh, some uh, uh, prosthetic uh, limbs or prosthetic legs. But then uh, after he joined HGST, he found out about this IIM program. And that's the time that he write his proposal to his uh, professor that he would like to combine the expertise of engineering, biology, and also physics to create his own major program. And that's how the first bionic major program in Asia was created in HGSC. And then I can tell you a lot now that uh, Thomas has already graduated from our university and he's going to further study in Europe for his um, a postgraduate degree and then we do hope that what he learned from HESC and the way that we uh, prepare him for his future research life would help him further develop his interest in bionics and then uh, from my sharing in the past uh, maybe five to ten minutes you can see that HESC offer opportunities that transcend the borders of geography, discipline, and then we want our students to explore more. And then we do want that our students could find their dream in our university and to learn from what we offer to them and to after they graduate and to purchase their dream um, in the future. And that's what I want to share with you about our university. But then in the next part, I'm going to invite our students to share with you, apart from pursuing their dream, what they have learned and what they have experienced in the four or five years of real things for life in Hong Kong and in the GSC. So now let me uh, introduce uh, Jason to all of you for his student sharing. So Jason. Yep. Hello, everyone. Share my screen. Okay, um, so hello everyone. Um, I'm sure that a lot of you here may be students and looking into which university you want to go into, but what I want to share today is my journey essentially for the past two years and what I've experienced. So in general, um, what I hope that all of you can get out of this sharing is that every university um, is meant for different people and there is no perfect fit. Uh, there is no one university that will fit everybody. So it takes a lot of research and understanding as to which university will suit you best. And I hope that through this sharing that you guys will be able to gain a deeper understanding as to uh, which university you truly wanna go to. So with that, let us begin. Um, a brief overview, my name is Jason. As they mentioned earlier, I'm Malaysian, but a difference is I only lived in Malaysia for half my life, which made, which made me a third culture kid. So this point I will bring up later on um, in terms of explaining uh, my university choices. So coming back to Malaysia, I continued my education at Wong Kiar International School and I graduated with an IB diploma. So for those who have, of you who are interested uh, in knowing, I took higher level um, biology, uh, language and literature, English and economics while I took standard levels, math, Spanish and business. So those were the six courses that I took in IB, and that was the six that I used to apply for HGUSD. So in HGUSD, I'm currently going into year three in the next two weeks. And as they mentioned, I'm in the School of Business, which with a double major in marketing and management. So yeah, that's the general information about me. To start the sharing, I'll kind of go in from the outside, the general perspectives, and then kind of go inside into the more details. So the first one is why I chose Hong Kong. So a lot of you may be wondering, there's so many countries, but why, why Hong Kong? And kind of linking back to um, being a third culture kid, I really like traveling and exploring different places that I haven't been. So Hong Kong in general is quite drastic from um, American system and 
somewhere where in Malaysia where life is relatively low paced. So this is somewhere where I definitely wanted to experience. And a few key factors, um, three to be specific, that I'll mention is, first of all, location. So Hong Kong not only has a fantastic location, um, first of all, because it's so close to mainland China, and I'm sure a lot of you will know the benefits in terms of location due to the business aspect. But I also want to mention the more social side, which is it's just close to countries that we all love to go to, including Japan, Korea, Taiwan, um, Macau, as you can see in the picture. And being so close, it is definitely um, worth it to go and explore these countries at the same time. So location is one of the factors why I chose to go to Hong Kong. The second one is food. So on top of the Hong Kong local food that they have, they have also a wide range of other international cuisine. Um, of course, being an international hub and a financial hub itself, um, there essentially is no limit to the choices that you have available. And that is another factor that is quite enticing for a lot of people, including myself, to go to Hong Kong. And lastly, the third one that I want to mention is the scenery. So a lot of you may know Hong Kong as the city life, the pack city, fast pace. However, there's also another side to Hong Kong, which is the more relaxed side, essentially the hiking, all the mountains view, the scenery. Um, this is another portion of Hong Kong that not everyone knows about, but is definitely a very big part as the people there really do love to enjoy both sides of life. So with these three things in mind, um, although life in Hong Kong can be very quick and very fast, maybe even stressful as some of you may know, um, there's all these different things that you can do to just kind of take a break and enjoy life while you're over there. And moving on to university specific stuff. So why did I choose to go to HKUSD? Um, some of the reasons that you may hear include the campus is beautiful. And of course that is uh, a fact. But there's, of course, um, other um, factors that play into it. And this is what I'll elaborate on. So to begin with, as I mentioned earlier, I came from an IB school. And as IB students, we typically end up going to the US or to the UK. And I, by all means, was about to follow that pathway as well, um, except for the fact that I was blessed with the opportunity that a student ambassador uh, like myself, so back then, um, She's a Malaysian senior, and she came to my high school and she gave a similar sharing about her university experience. And from that point on, the very same night, I went back and I removed one of my uh, choices on my list of applications I was going to apply to, and I put in HGUSD. So at that point, it's history as to what happened. However, um, just as a general uh, understanding, I had a total of seven acceptances, so six from the US and one from Hong Kong. And some of those acceptances are the ones shown on screen. And I think from this, one tip that I just want to give people is don't really think too much and just kind of follow what your heart believes in as the best choice for you. Um, don't be peer pressured to follow your friends either. Uh, just really choose what you feel will be best for your, for your life. Yeah. So. In terms of the more detailed parts as to why I chose HKUST specifically, um, the first one is an abundance of major. So prior to coming into university, I didn't really know what I wanted to study. And in order to alleviate that, I decided to choose somewhere that had a lot of thing, a lot of majors to choose from. So to give a general perspective, um, US schools typically have about five majors or so in the business side at least. And it wasn't a lot to choose from, and I was kind of worried that I wouldn't find something that I like. However, on the flip side, in UST, we have 17 different business majors. Uh, these include the dual degrees, double majors. Um, so this was something that was very enticing to me. And by having these options available, I wasn't too worried about not finding something that I liked, as I would be able to explore it in year one and then only choose what I really wanted to focus on in my second year onwards. So that was the first thing. The second one was the abundance of exchange opportunities. So as I said, I love traveling. Um, and I was really contemplating between a life in US, which I haven't stated before, versus a life in Hong Kong. Uh, and I thought to myself that coming to UST wouldn't be too big of a deal either, because I would still get to go to the US to exchange if I really wanted to, as there were so many exchange opportunities to choose from. Um, specifically, there's 250 
um, exchange opportunities. And some of these exchange opportunities are Ivy League schools in the US as well. So I knew that coming here as a top ranked school, I wouldn't miss, miss out on the life there in the US if I choose to go on exchange there as well. So these were essentially the two big factors of me choosing to go to HKUSD. So next, um, as Crystal said, uh, these are our university rankings. But again, the one I really wanted to emphasize on is the employability ranking. Because at the end of the day, most of us come to university for education and in the future to get a job. And at the end of the day, um, this ranking plays a big role into our long-term perspective as if we are already that much better in that, that much more hopeful in getting a job, then it plays a big role into what we use to decide as to which university we want to go to. And to make it quantifiable, I think one of the factors that a lot of you will look at is the tuition fees. So as I mentioned, I was about to go to the US and to keep it in simple terms, I could essentially finish all four years, my whole degree in Hong Kong while only um, studying one year in the US. And with the rankings, assuming equivalent, um, that was essentially a no-brainer as to which university I would go to. So yeah, these were the two more quantitative reasons. And now, um, I'll just kind of run you through essentially some of the stuff that I've been doing in my first two years in university. And it will also give you an insight as to what life is like over there. Uh, in the beginning of year one, I came in actually with a sports scholarship, which is something that a lot of you can apply for if you're an athlete. And there are many other scholarships available, um, not only your admission scholarship, but also extracurricular scholarships like sports. Um, so I got that. I came in. I joined the badminton team there. Um, I played until end of year two, which is where I left off. Yeah. And in my first winter break, I didn't want to do an internship in work per se, but I had a passion at that point in cooking. So I came back to Malaysia and I ended up uh, interning as a chef in the restaurant. So this is something that I did. I'll, I'll elaborate more on internships in my second internship in year two. Um, so moving on in terms of location, something that Hong Kong has a lot again was islands. And one of the islands that we went to during our year one was Chongzhao, which is quite famous um, in general. And we went there as a whole Malaysian gang and it was a day trip. So it was quite nice. And of course, there are many other islands for you to explore in your free time there as well. Then moving on to second semester, we went to Macau as a group. And this was our first time there essentially. And we took a one day trip and it was quite fun. And of course, very simple to go to because it was only a boat trip away from Hong Kong. And lastly, during summer, I again mentioned earlier, I'm part of the student ambassador program and I had a lot of sharings in Malaysia as well. Um, this was in Sunway and this was in one of the other international schools. So with that, that concludes year one. And in year two, um, as a lot of you may know, um, we had a bumpy start uh, with the uh, protests and demonstrations. And it led to an early end of the semester, but we weren't too worried as we made that up with a quick trip to Taiwan, specifically Taipei, um, again with another group of Malaysian, my close friends. And yeah, um, after that, we, I was actually still part of a competition um, called Halt Prize which is a social entrepreneurship competition. And we managed to get third place in the UST round, but we also got fast track to the, the second round of the Alibaba pitching competition. So this was something that was quite fun and quite interesting and definitely a unique experience to go through. And I think one of the key takeaways from this is as a business student, at least in UST, there is a lot of case competitions, which allows you to really challenge yourself, uh, meet new friends, and just step out of your comfort zone and learn something new. So Holt Prize is just one of the many that is offered. And you will be bombarded with all these opportunities when you are at university in HKUSD for sure. So moving on from that, something that I did um, in the beginning of year two was establish an association. So I founded the Hong Kong Malaysian Student Association. And essentially, what this is is an association that is aiming to unite all the Malaysian students who are pursuing their tertiary education in Hong Kong. So as of this point, we already have a full committee, but uh, it's still in the early stages, of course, and we hope that 
not only will we be able to unite the million students, but also unite to the consulates, the working class, the adults, alumni, and also just take care of the Malaysian welfare, uh, Malaysian students' welfare who are in Hong Kong. So quick pitch, but if you guys are going to Hong Kong, uh, do check out our social media pages on ID and Facebook. And lastly, um, the end of my year two was an internship at Grab uh, because I was already back in Malaysia. So I did both my online classes and an internship at the same time. Um, and I was at Grab for four months and it was definitely an experience. Um, in terms of internship opportunities at HKUSD, there's again a whole lot of them. Not only do you have a lot of help to find internships because they have a whole portal for them, but uh, it's very easy to just ask around and look through the career fairs as well that are offered during each semester of school. So yeah, that concludes my life so far in HKUSD for the last two years. So to kind of conclude, I think um, I just want to say that I'm sure a lot of you may heard, have heard that HUSD is a stressful school and maybe quite challenging at times. But at the end of the day, we don't really grow if things are given to us and things are very easy. So we only grow when things are hard and challenging, and that's when we will be able to step out of our comfort zone and improve. So don't worry too much. And if you do have the opportunity to come and you feel it is your perfect fit university for you, then um, I'm sure you'll be happy to call it home for the next four years and further and to finish your degree in HDUSD. So with that, um, if you're interested in finding out more, uh, feel free to contact me as well. Yeah. And Crystal, I'll pass the time back to you. Yes, thank you, Jason, for sharing his life in HUSD. You can see that for our students, they have a lot of opportunities to share and to learn. And then we have internships, and then you have time to explore in the city. And then you also have time to learn something new to establish your own uh, association in HUSD. You can see Jason and then all of his uh, Teammates has built a very, very strong community of Malaysian in uh, Malaysian students in Hong Kong. So if you are having a chance to, no matter you are going to study in Hong Kong, in our university or other universities in Hong Kong, you can make sure that you have still have your friends and families in here because there is a very strong Malaysian community in Hong Kong. And then thanks for Jason for the student sharing. And the next part would be uh, me telling you more about our curriculums and programs and how you could apply to us. Here you can see uh, uh, our admissions brochures. If you are interested in us, please visit https joint.usc.hk slash downloads to see our admissions leaflet. In the leaflet, you can see a lot of different information. So now I'm going to give you some highlights of our programs. In our school, we have a total of uh, five uh, schools or uh, office. We have School of Science, Engineering, Business and Management, and Humanities and Social Science, and also one interdisciplinary programs office, which offers some major programs that combining the expertise of all the other four schools. And in total, they offer around 44 majors and 24 minors in our school. Here is the list of single major program in our school. So you can see from different school, uh, we have different major programs for our students. Today, I'm not going to tell you each of the major programs one by one because I'm so sure among the audience, there should be a, a lot of different students have different interests. But then you can take a look to our admissions brochures for the details of each of the programs. And then one more point is that all the major programs that I've shown in this slide are single major program. But we do offer other types for example, joint school program. For example, uh, our School of Science and School of Engineering, they combine their expertise and offer data science and technology to our students. And then uh, we also have other uh, schools that combine expertise, for example, business and engineering. We have biotechnology and business. So if you have multiple interests or if you have uh, different interests in different aspects or disciplines, you could consider these programs. Apart from that, you can see here is the individualized interdisciplinary major that I mentioned earlier that Thomas uh, graduated from. We also have environmental management and technology within our interdisciplinary program. Yes.
yeah, maybe your slide you need to exit and enter again. Yeah, because like quite uh, I I think a part of that missing. Sure, sure. So yeah. can you see the slide right yeah, now? Sure, yeah, sure. That's better. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Oh, so. uh, now we have our interdisciplinary major in uh, our interdisciplinary programs office, and then here you can see the majors that they are offering. And then for one more reminders for all of you is that all the single major program and these joint school programs and these two programs are four years long. However, there is a major program that would be five years long. That would be this dual degree program in technology management. For this uh, program, why does it cost? Uh, why does it longer than uh, the other programs? It's because after you graduate from this program five years long, you will get two degrees from HKST. One from the School of Engineering or Science and one from the business uh, sector. So you will get two degrees after five years of time. So this is the difference between this program and the other one. And then you may wonder, what would you learn uh, during the four years or five years of periods in HKST? So in our school, uh, we have a lot of flexibility for you to choose from one major, two major, or even one minor, two major. We have all kinds of flexibility for you to choose your major and minor program. But basically, for you to complete one major program, you have to complete a minimum of 120 credits from our school. So during the first two years of time, you may have to study some pre-major or foundation program from your school. And then starting from year two onwards, some major and minor courses specifically for your choice of majors or minor programs. And then throughout the year, we also need our students to complete university common core programs. Along the four years of times, these university common core courses will not be related to your major because we want our students to have all around development. So you have to study some major program for example, history, music, or psychology, those are uh, courses that would be not that would not be related to your major, but to build yourself to have your better understanding in different disciplines. And that's why uh, this is the way of uh, how we would like to design our curriculum. And then now you know more about what we offer to you. And then now you may wonder. How would you apply to us? Uh, what are the admission requirements? So in the next part, I'm going to tell you more. So in the uh, HESC, we accept applications separately from all the other universities in Hong Kong or in the world. So we have our own application system. So students just have to visit our website to create an account, fill in the online application form, submit your choice, and then nominate your academic referee or career counselor to us, upload the documents. For example, as usual, you have to upload your transcripts, your personal statement, and also the reference letter from your counselors. And then later on, submit your application. And then uh, we will review your application accordingly. But then after you submit your application, I know that some of you might have uh, your updated examination results after the admissions deadline. Don't worry, because you still have a chance to visit our application website and update your exam results again after you submit your application. So here you are is the uh, application process, but then uh, when you have to apply to us. So I know that uh, the, from the audience, there might be different types of students. Some of you might have to join university in the 2020, but some of you will apply later on, maybe in 2021. But then this timeline I share with you will be more or less the same for every year. So let me explain more about this timeline. So if you are going to enter university in 2021 uh, September, you have to apply one year earlier. So the application will open in 20th of September of this year. And that will be two deadlines. One will be early round deadline in November 20th this year, and one will be main round deadline will be uh, in uh, 14th of January 2021. And then uh, what is the difference between early round and main round? Usually, uh, the main difference would be uh, if you apply in the early round, you will receive your results from December this year onwards. But if you apply in the main round, 
you will receive your offers from mid-January next year onwards. So if you apply in the early round, you will receive your results earlier so that you can focus on your study. So it depends on which uh, uh, when you would like to receive your offers. And the next part will be we usually recommend our students to apply earlier. The reason why is that if you are applying in the early round but you didn't get an offer from us, you will have a second chance in the main round. You will be automatically considered again in the main round application. And that's why we always uh, encourage our students to apply earlier. And then here is our application website. In case you're applying in the coming year, uh, you may visit this website starting from September 10th onwards of this year, and then fill in your application form and start to prepare all kinds of documents. And then next part, I'm going to tell you more about the admissions requirements. I know that a lot of you might want to read the details of the admissions requirements. Please visit our website and uh, see more details. But then in the next part, I'm going to do a summary for all of you. So for um, admission requirements, it will be in three parts. First part will be the general admissions requirements. Uh, and the second part will be school specific requirements and the third part will be English requirements. So in the first part, general admissions requirements, uh, we do accept a lot of different types of uh, qualifications. And then we accept, for example, IB, A-levels, SAT and uh, AP, and then also Malaysian patent qualification like STPM and UEC, and then also Canadian uh, application, uh, qualifications. But then uh, if your qualification is not listed here, don't worry because we do accept a full list of uh, qualifications from all around the world. So you have to visit our website and then click on your countries or click on your cur curriculum and see the details of the requirements that we have for our students. Next, come to the second part of the requirements will be subject requirements. To explain more, um, for the subject requirements, you have to fulfill a certain uh, subject requirements if you are applying to these major programs. Take uh, engineering as an example. If you are applying to the School of Engineering, you must take mathematics. If you are taking IB, you must take mathematics in your IB examination, plus one science subject among biology, chemistry, physics, computer studies, and statistics. That means mathematics plus one science subjects in your examination. Make sure you read this table before you apply to us because we do see some students that do not fulfill these subjects requirements, but they, for example, they didn't take mathematics, but they still apply to the School of Engineering. And in this way, you will waste your choice because you do not fulfill the subject requirements and it will your choice will be wasted. And then for the final part of our requirements would be the English language requirements. Here lists out some of the English requirements that we accept. For example, if you already get IELTS 6.0, you can forget about the other tests. And then because we uh, only need students to fulfill either one of these requirements. So to fill a full list of English requirements, again, you can visit our website or you could email us if you do not uh, if you are not sure about whether your English requirements reveal our standard. And then to give you some tips or insight on uh, the average score that uh, we accept in our previous years, you can take these scores as a reference uh, for different examination. Of course, apart from these scores, we also look into the profile of the students, including the uh, personal statement and also with the extracurricular activities that you participate in. So apart from the score, we also take a look into the applicant profiles, but then for these scores, you may take these as reference. And then more tips on the application process. Uh, I know that a lot of schools are going to have interview to the applicants, but then for our school, we only have compulsory interviews for some of the major programs. For example, these major programs, if you are applying to these, you have compulsory interviews. This is the uh, part of the admissions process. So if you're invited for their interviews, you must attend those interviews. And then if you are in applying to other programs, uh, what would happen? Would you have an interview? I can tell you that some of the applicants are applying to other programs, they may be selected for an interview. 
although that interview is not compulsory, it's a chance for you to show off yourself, showcase yourself, your quality and your personality. So we do recommend students, if you are applying to other programs, you do go and attend the interviews. But then uh, if you are not selected for the interviews, don't worry, because we do have students who are applying to other programs. They do not get an interview, but they still get into our school. So this is more about the uh, admissions interview and details about the interviews. And the last part of my sharing would be money matters. And for the cost of studying in GSC, as said, uh, uh, Jason already shared with all of you, the price uh, comparing HKEST tuition fee and the uh, tuition fee of the, all the uh, other universities, maybe in US or UK, our tuition fees is quite reasonable. This is the tuition fee for one year studying in HKEST. It would be around 18,000 US dollar per year. And then as said, we have our residential hall. If you are lucky enough to get into those halls, you will have to pay around uh, 1,700 to 2,800 US dollar per year to live in those halls. And someone might wonder why are there price range between uh, for the university accommodations? Because for our universities, we do provide different types of rooms and different types of halls. For example, we have single room, double room, or triple room. So it depends on your choice, the price will be a bit different. So add up in total, it would be around 26,000 US dollar to 27,000 US dollar to study in HKUST for one year. So if you're studying in HKUST for four years of time, you have to times this uh, price times four would be the approximate amount that you have to pay for your whole undergraduate study period. So last but not least would be scholarships. I know that a lot of you might concern about whether I could get a scholarships from HASC. So I can tell you that in our school, we have two types of scholarships. One type would be admissions, academic scholarships, and then one type would be uh, non-academic scholarships. So for the academic part, it will be easier to explain because you don't have to apply separately. As long as you submit your application in the previous website that I've shown you, you have already you are already considered as the scholarship applicant as well. So when you are issued with an admissions offer from HKEST, you will be issued together with your scholarship offer. So at that time, you can take a look to your offer letter and then to consider whether to accept our offer or not together with the scholarship details. But then for the next part, that would be non-academic scholarships. For example, the sports scholarship that um, Jason got when he got admitted to HKEST, uh, you have to apply separately. So the application deadline would be similar to the early round and middle round deadline for the application of our uh, uh, admissions. But then you have to be aware of the criteria and also the application forms that are available for the non-academic scholarships. So if you are interested in this, feel free to visit the website of our scholarship office to see the details. And make sure that you don't miss the deadline of these uh, non-academic scholarships. And I think that's all that I would like to share with all of you today. But then if you have any questions in your mind, you could uh, feel free to type in your questions in the uh, platform that you are using, for example, Facebook or Instagram. Maybe Jason could also uh, join this part to answer the questions of the, from the audience as well. Hello, Jason. Hello. I'm not sure whether any of you have asked questions. Let's wait for a few minutes, but then um, maybe during this period of time, if you're uh, still thinking about your questions, maybe Jason could also share with all of you, uh, all of the students about your latest uh, learning experience in home, uh, in HESC, because uh, we can share with you that uh, in the latest uh, semester, for this past semester, we are using online learning throughout the semester. So maybe, uh, Jason, could share with the students more about that. Okay, sure. Um, so yeah, as as everyone in the world is kind of going through, uh, most of us have switched to online learning. Um, to be frank, it's 
an interesting experience. And I think it really depends on each individual as to whether they like it or they don't like it. Uh, it's really a preference thing, to be honest. Um, for those who really like uh, just kind of staying in their room, maybe a bit more introverted, I think that this might be something you guys really enjoy because you have so much more free time. You don't have to dress up. You don't have to travel to your classroom, etc. You're saving a lot of time there. So in some sense, it's very effective and efficient if you're that type of person. But on the flip side of things, uh, if you kind of like to mingle around, meet a lot of people, um, you really like just uh, going out and enjoying life there, um, it may be a struggle to begin because you're kind of just trapped in your room 24-7. And of course, it's not the easiest to uh, socialize or meet new friends in that aspect. So it's a balance of both, uh, for sure. Um, but overall, in terms of academics, it's generally still the same. So most of our professors in UST have your live classes, but we also have all the recorded classes. So if you, for some reason, couldn't attend and you missed that class and you still want to watch their lecture again, um, that's not a problem because it's very easy to just uh, go and rewatch the lectures. Typically, it's like within one day, it will be uploaded. Um, but if they don't, it's, it's easy just to remind them and for them to upload it. So that's something that is good. Um, in terms of other activities, of course, sports and all of that is a no-go. <laughs> But uh, all the other clubs and societies are still running. Um, most of them have their weekly meetings or monthly meetings, whatever they decide they need it. But yeah, other than that, life is still, still going. <laughs> Everyone's still uh, figuring ways to go around it. Yes, thank you, Jason, for sharing his latest experience with us. And then uh, I still couldn't see it. a lot of questions coming in. Maybe you still need some time to think of your questions. But then I can share with you our contacts and emails so that uh, if you have any further questions, you could definitely contact us through our social media. Because uh, throughout the days, uh, we will have our Instagram uh, post to share with you their live in the GSC through our Instagram and we also have our own Facebook account and Twitter account and YouTube channel. If you want to keep contact with us, feel free to follow us in the social media. And then if you do have some kinds of uh, admissions related questions, um, you could definitely direct message us through the, our Facebook or IG account. But then if you would like to send us an email or talk to us, you could also uh, visit our website to subscribe our newsletter or to send us an email about your questions. And then I would like to also invite uh, any one of us who would like to uh, know more about HGSC, please fill in this form and then we'll keep you updated on our latest uh, events and also latest updates on our admission requirements. So please do visit this website and fill in the form if you want to keep in touch with us. So if there is no any questions from the audience, uh, maybe we could have this section end and welcome and thank you. And then we do welcome you all of you joining GESC in the future years or the academic years in the coming September or next year September. So thank you for joining us today. Sure, thank you. I think uh, it's come to the end of the webinar. So once again, we thanks uh, Crystal and Jason. It's a very good sharing section. And I think most of the students, they get what they want to know. So uh, let's say if you got any questions, yeah, you can just email or contact uh, uh, contact them. So once again, thank you. Yeah, see you next time. Yeah, thank you, Crystal. Bye. Thank you, Jason. Thank you. Bye. 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 So if you got any further study question, you feel free to contact us and hope to see you in future. Thank you very much. Bye. Thank you. Bye. 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 那就完了，他要留 email 那些。